Hey guys, how's it going? Sean here. Today we're going to be going over how to get nice clean curved surfaces with your carving. And we're going to do that by going over how to carve a ball out of a cube. Learning to carve curves is really important because they show up everywhere in carving. And I think learning how to just carve a simple sphere is a really good starting point because this shows you how to transfer that skill through to anything. For example, with Evie here, we've used a basically a spherical shape to form the head and the same thing with the tail. And it's all the same principles that I'm going to be showing you today. So we're going to be using the most simple of tools today. Pencil, a ruler, a straight chisel or a number three gouge and a knife. In fact, you could do this with either the chisel or a knife. I'm going to show you how to do it with just a knife or just a chisel so that you can do it with whatever you've got at home. If you're interested in learning more about basic tools to pick up to start carving, check the link on screen now. So today we're going to be showing you this with basswood or linden. We're going to be doing this with the cube to make a nice sphere. So go in ahead and cut yourself out a cube of any size with your saw or you can find these pre-cut. We're using basswood today because it's very easy to carve and it's very forgiving for beginners. But if you can't find basswood, any hardwood will do. It just might be a bit harder to work with. You can use pine if you're desperate, but it will be a bit harder and you might get chip out. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to mark out our center lines and our points that we're going to carve to. You don't have to be super accurate when you're marking stuff up for carving because it's more art than engineering. I am an engineer, so I get a little bit carried away sometimes. But we're just going to come in, mark off a center point. I do this, you know, old carpenter's trick where you use your fingers to rest against the side of the wood, and then you just run a center line, carry that through, and that's good enough for us. So then we're going to repeat the same thing on the other side. So now what we've done is we've basically created a grid and created center points. The center points are the key thing. Center points and center lines are really helpful when you're carving. So these center points are not going to be carved off, whereas everything else in these areas is going to be removed down to create a sphere. So our first step to making this cube into a sphere is we're going to be carving it into a cylinder. So the important thing to do first is to identify your grain direction. This is our end grain and it's quite obvious here. For basswood it's sometimes quite hard to tell. So our grain direction runs this way and this is our top. Alright so now that we've got our grain direction defined and we know where our end grain is we're going to mark in our first circle with our compass and then we're going to flip it over to the other end grain so now we have the top and the bottom of our cylinder. All of this material here will be removed. So we're going to go through this with the chisel first. So what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be taking off this ridge here in between this line and this line. And we're not going to be touching these two lines. Okay, so we're just going to start right on top. I'm just going to take a nice clean cut along the top and just take a facet along off the corner. So you can see here, we're cutting the wrong direction along the grain and it's starting to chip out. So what we're gonna do now, is we're just gonna turn around and come back the other way. Because this, if we keep pushing here, I'm gonna put too much pressure on it and that's when we're gonna get chip out and it's all gonna go wrong. So we're just gonna reverse the direction and come back here and see how much smoother that is. And that's probably because of that knot there. So at this point, because we're roughing out, we're taking off nice big strokes along the grain. Once we get down towards the finish, we're going to be taking off smaller chips. Alright, so the same thing here, we're getting chip out again, so we're just going to come back from the other direction. We're not pushing too hard, we're just letting the sharpness of the chisel do the cut for us. Alright, so I've taken it pretty much down to the line on both sides. You'll notice how I was turning it around a lot to avoid chip out. And that's going to happen even more when you're using a hardwood which has a lot of changing grain direction. Such as cherry or if you're using a softwood like pine. Okay, so now that we've come through and done that with the chisel, we're going to come through and do the same thing again with knife. Alright, so get whatever knife you have. So the technique's a little bit different with the knife. Instead of chipping 
away with a like a chisel which is kind of scraping at it with a knife we're when we're working along the grain like this we're more going to be splitting along the grain like this and taking off shavings a bit more especially when it's nice and sharp like this one is at the moment taking nice big shavings but we're making sure not to cut down into it too much a lot of people use it like that palm grip i'm not too much of a fan of that sort of personal preference you can take out a lot of a lot of material really quickly like that. I don't find it as accurate, but that's just me personally. So I like to use both a chisel and a knife because it gives you flexibility. Um, it's a lot easier to rough out with a chisel than it is with a knife. Um, and a chisel lets you cut in different angles than a knife does. For example, a knife lets you get in with a tip, whereas a chisel lets you take nice big flat areas and smooth off surfaces a lot easier than a knife does. And a lot of carvers will only use a knife uh, but I'm all for using both a knife and a chisel because it makes your carving a lot more flexible. So once we've got this curved face, we're just going to come through and reinstate these lines. Because this line is now going to be what we're going to work down to with our sphere. So now that we have our cylinder, which is really the easy part of this carving, we're going to be carving the cylinder into a sphere. So this is basically how I do every carving. I start out with one 2D template, this being our first circle, and then I bring in another 2D template, this being our second circle in this case, and then that will form our whole 3D shape. All these little center points along here, we're not going to be touching them. They have to stay as they are. Again, we want to be carving out all these bits along here down to meet a nice curve. So there's a few ways to do this. Carve around it like a lathe would do. We're not a lathe, we're, we're carving by hand, so it's a lot easier to follow the grain direction because we don't have speed on our side. What I like to do, draw a line like this, a nice curve, sort of showing semicircle between these points, and then I'm gonna be taking off all this area. So I'm gonna be cutting off this area up here. And then once I'm happy with it through here, I'm gonna follow that around. And I'm gonna do the same on the other side. So I'm gonna get basically a 2D view of a circle. And I'm just going to slowly start taking off the corners until I have the circle on, the other, on this side. And then we're going to do the same on this side. So you'll notice now that we're carving across the grain here, which is still fine. What you don't want to do here is carve down the grain against the grain. Because what you're going to do, and I'm going to show you here, is you're going to get chip out like that. See how it's, it's chucking in, it's wanting to jump out, and it's going to pull all that out, and you'll get a big tear out and then your nice perfect circle that we've carved there is going to get ruined. So we either want to go uphill towards the top of our cylinder or we want to go across the cylinder, never towards the center of the cylinder. Now it's definitely a little bit harder than carving the cylinder because a lot of our easy guidelines are gone and you're having to visualize a lot better. But this is really going to help you with your carving because you're going to be able to visualize that 3D shape and how you're actually bringing it out of the woods a lot better. So now if we look at this in 2D, we have our circular edge carved in here. Now we're just gonna follow that around to get rid of these other edges. All right, so now we're gonna show you how to do this for knife as well. Basically the same thing, coming across the grain and still up the grain. So now that we've taken off the corners of the cylinder, because that's the visualization trick, is to imagine that the cylinder has four corners and we're just rounding off those four corners. It is quite hard to visualize how to make the cylinder into a sphere, so that's my trick. You're just rounding off four corners to make it into this sort of shape. So what we're now gonna do with this shape is we're just gonna knock these corners off and even them out to the line here. Okay. So now just like before, we're not going to be touching these lines. These lines are basically done. We might adjust them when we come back in, but for now, these center lines are done. And we're going to be knocking down these corners so that they match the curve of these lines.
Now you notice here, as I start getting smoother and take, start taking less off, my chips start getting smaller and that's a sign that you're getting closer to your actual dimensions. See, because this is starting to look much more like an actual ball compared to this. See, because here you want to be taking stuff off real fast, you want to be taking off big cuts. But as you get closer, you need to be starting off taking off smaller little cuts, taking off finer little bits. Okay, so it's still pretty rough, but now we've got a hemisphere. And we're just going to do it all again on the other side. All right, I just raced through that off camera. Now our cube has become a ball. It's still pretty rough, so I'm going to do some finishing cuts and even out the surface. Here's some tips for getting nice consistent curved surfaces. You'll notice that while I'm talking to you, I'm running my hands across the surface the whole time. I'm looking for high points. You know, I can see one here already. So you can come in here and you can mark them and then I'll come through and I'll just knock that down. And they tend to happen more often towards the end grain because you're always gonna find the end grain harder to carve. You'll find that your shape tends to be a bit more square when it gets towards the end grain. So look for those areas for high points and look to smooth those areas out. As I can kind of see on mine, when I look at it and rotate it, I've got a couple of high points. So I'm just gonna knock that down and I'm just gonna keep doing that for a period of time until I'm really happy with how this feels in my hand. And you know, and even just then when I put it in my hand, oh, there's another one. Just knock that area down. Another area to look is this area that was in the middle of the cylinder. You might have tended to stay away from cutting this because of the pencil line. So it might be a little bit flatter. You can see here, I've got an area that's a little bit flatter. So we're just gonna come in there and just give that a little bit of curve to it. Okay, so while I'm doing these finishing cuts, I'm always going from the center of the ball to the top on the end grain, because otherwise I'm gonna get tear out. So we're just doing nice smooth cuts, really short strokes. Long strokes now are gonna take too much material off. You'll notice in your pile, you started out taking big chips like these, and now we're taking tiny little chips like this. So I'm sure a lot of people in the comments will be saying, hey Sean, you could have done that a lot easier if you had a lathe. Yeah, I could do it a lot easier with a lathe, but I don't have a lathe. All I have is a chisel. You can make a lot of curved objects without a lathe. Okay, so that's how you hand carve a sphere. It's pretty basic, but this is one of the fundamental skills that I use for all of my carving. This could become a head, a body, a tail, you name it. I'd love to see what you guys come up with. Follow me on Instagram at Simon Wood Carving and then tag me in what you create with this new skill. That's it, give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Comment down below with what you'd like to see in the future and subscribe for more wood carving content coming soon. Cheers guys and see you in the next one.